good. But it's also good when we come and we have our mothers singing songs of Zion and our choir coming and singing the songs of Zion. Our hymns are very important. They get us through some things, amen. And as we walk and know that God is with us, that's good enough to help our souls to rejoice. Amen. To know that he loves us despite what we go through, despite where we are going in or out of, God is present and he walks with us. And not only do he walks with us, but he talks with us. Amen. Anybody had a talk with Jesus anytime soon, knowing that he is walking with you, you don't have to worry. He's with you. He promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. We give God praise. Hallelujah. Did you hear the anointing in her voice? It just lets you know that she has a relationship with God because you hear the anointing in her voice. Amen. And it's the anointing that breaks yokes. It's the anointing that reminds us of the goodness of God. I'm already preaching. I didn't give you the scripture already, but we have already started. Amen. Because it's good to know that God walks with us and he talks with us. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God praise for Sister Linda. Amen. And now she has covered our service on this morning. Amen. And for each and every one of you that are present here, and especially to those on our Zoom. Amen. We give God praise. I will not be before you too long. Amen. But I want to entitle this the greatest love story ever told. The greatest love story ever told. And I can't just put it in just one part. So I'll be back the next time and the next time because uh, we have 66 books in the Bible and the whole entire Bible is about the love of God that he had for us. Amen. And the love that we should learn about so we can spread it to others. The greatest love story ever told. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We lift you up in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the song of Zion that came forth on this morning. Thank you for the voices that were lifted on this morning, oh God. Thank you for reminding us, God, that you walk with us and you talk with us and you let us know that we are your own. Oh, so many people need to know that they are needed and wanted and, and that they're special, oh God. We thank you for your word, the song of, of glory that came this way, oh God. We thank you Father, we thank you for the 66 books, oh God, that you have a blessed men and women to write these books, oh God, and remind us of your love. Thank you, Lord. We need to know, we need to be reminded, especially in a time where the world is upside down, that you still love us, God. We still need to understand that you are still with us, oh God, and you'll never leave us nor forsake us. We need to understand how special we are, oh God, because life will cause us to forget, Father, but we say thank you for your word. And we say, thank you, God, for doing a new thing in us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you turn your books, your Bibles to John chapter 17, I'm going to read a couple of verses, verses starting at the 20th verse. Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 17. That's St. John 17, verses 20 to 24. Amen. I believe I have the New Living Translation, but you can definitely follow me. Hallelujah. In your Bibles. Amen. John 17. Amen. To God be the glory. And the word of the Lord reads as thus. And Jesus is, <laughs> this is interesting. He is in the Garden of Gethsemane in chapter 17. Y'all can't tell me that God ain't working this stuff out like right in front of our faces. Amen. He is actually, John 17 is just what you've been singing about. 
John 17, Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane and he's about to go to the cross for us. But these are the words, amen. He has a conversation with God, hallelujah. It's good to have a conversation with God. And he says these words, he says, I am praying not only for these disciples, He's talking about the 12 that have been with him for three years. He said, but also for all who will ever believe in me through this message. He's talking about y'all and me. Amen. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will will believe you sent me. I have given I have given them the glory you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. I am in them, and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me that you love them, watch that, that you love them as much as you love me. (laughs) Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. Hallelujah. I pin those words. I pin those words. I'm trying to find to make sure I got it right. It says, may they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me. But this is the clincher. This is what I want you to understand. And that you love them as much as you loved me. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, can I just say to you, I've read chapter 17 many times and I haven't caught on to that word right there just to remind me that he loved me just as much as he loved Jesus. Hallelujah. Doesn't it do something to your spirit to know that the God that sits high loves us just as much as he loved his only begotten son, the one he sent to die for us? Aren't you excited to know that he loves us even now? Because Jesus was calling on us and he was praying for us back in his sin. Isn't it good to know I know we got a we got a lot of uh, lovers in the house. We may not have a lot here today. Amen, amen. We got some that celebrated fifty years, and we a lot of uh, lovers in the house. I I, I know we, we're here. We here. We we got some love stories that we can remember in life. Amen. And how we how we was excited and giggly and 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 nice and happy and smiling when we met that person that came in our life. Amen. And some of us are still with them. Amen. After 50 and 40 years. Right, Brother Garland? Y'all just celebrated how many years? 58. Hallelujah. 58 years. But if I tell you there's a better love story than ever the 58 years that you've been, there's a love story that over, overcome that one. But you experienced, because of your relationship with God and your wife's relationship with God, you experienced some good things. And even in our lives, we may have someone that we called our lover, our friend, our husband, someone that did something, had us twisting and turning in our spirits. But if I could tell you something, there's one that's even better. I got a better story to, to tell you today about a greater love. Uh, than never before. Before the foundation of the world, he knew us and loved us and knew we were going to be messed up. He knew we were going to fall down. He knew that we were going to turn our backs on him, but he still sent his son. And we only see 66 books and they said said there's some lost books that could not 
could not be part of this volume, but just knowing that God loved us from the very beginning, starting from Genesis to Revelation. And so we're going to go on to an adventure uh, called The Greatest Love. And I, I looked it up on, on Google. There is a movie out and I tried to watch it. It just did not. <laughs> it was one of those old movies back in the day. I did get to sit down and listen to it a little bit, but then as God just continued to just pour into me, it tells me that the whole Bible is a love story. The whole Bible is a love story. It begins with God's love and it ends with God's love. From Genesis to Revelation, before anything exists, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost met together. There was nothing. <laughs> there was Genesis. We read it today. God is so good. He just put everything together. Our devotional was on Genesis chapter one. And it talked about how nothingness and God just spoke into the atmosphere. Hallelujah. He spoke. It was nothing. Have you ever felt like you was down to nothing and then that lover, that one that you love so much, he said something to you to make you feel a, a little bit better about yourself? But can I tell you that we serve a God that's with us always. He's always whispering in our ears. He's always showing us that he loves us. The God that, that speaks into our lives, what we feel is nothing. God said, I have purpose in you. I spoke purpose in you. Hallelujah, because I love you. God spoke the words, let there be. And it was. <laughs> let the. And it happened. Can I remind you that God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost was present. And John chapter one, verses one through four reminds us of this. He says, in the beginning, the word already existed. <laughs> I'm new to living, new living. It says the word was with God. The word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God he created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to every one. So the word that God spoke represent Jesus. And every time he spoke, things happen. But then the Holy Spirit had to come in and work everything out that was spoken and let it become. Oh my God. So the God that we serve, the triune God says to us that I love you so much that despite you look like, felt like, and feel sometime that you are nothing, when I speak into your life, the word of God will come and speak and the Holy Spirit will work it out for you. So that's why Genesis 1 and 2 says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep, but the spirit, it says, and the spirit of God hovered over the surface of the water. And so, as we move forward in Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 not only does God show us that the God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost loved us enough to speak into nothingness and make something come out of it that was good. Remember, every time he said, let there be, it was good. <laughs> so when he spoke in our life, we were good. But sin. So Genesis 1, 26 can you show it to me again, preacher? Yes, I'm going to show it to you in this scripture. It says, and God said, let us make man in our own image. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish and the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So 
the God had set together and consulted with one another. <laughs> and they said, let us create man in our own image. Right there tells me that God loves me. Don't that tell us that God loves us? Why would he put his image in us if we was not special to him? He didn't put it in the trees. He didn't put it in the plants. He didn't put it on the land. He didn't put it in the sea when he was dividing things. No, he said, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness. He creatively made us and put in us all of him. Isn't that love? We are his crowning glory. You, you, you know, your husband, your wife, they tell you how awesome you are, how beautiful you are, how you are special to them. But we are his crowning glory. And, and we embrace all of his dignity, his nobility, and everything that, that God has, we have in us. He said, let us make man in our own likeness, in our own way. Amen. God planned and created us with a special grace and care. He took time. How many people take time with people? That's why they could, they could celebrate 58 years. They took time. Sometimes we get impatient. We waiting for somebody to change when we need to be changing. Ouch. Haven't the Lord ever told you, have you looked at the mirror lately? Maybe it's not him. Maybe it's not her. Maybe it's not them. Maybe it's you. <laughs> Maybe you haven't been doing what is right. Now, when we look at numbers and Deuter and and and, and um, Exodus, Exodus talks about it. We're gonna get back to Exodus. Maybe the next time I come uh, um, before you, we're gonna talk about Exodus. But uh, numbers in Leviticus, it talks about that journey that the the, the, the children of Israel was taken um, through this journey. We can see uh, the love of God because He gave them chance after chance. But they tell me that um, as I was studying the word, it tells me that Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy is a testimony, a testimony to the primary love that God uh, shows because when he had to deal with men, it was in Deuteronomy. He had to really deal with those Israelites. You know how he deals with us day by day, uh, <laughs> night by night. Amen. Uh, so in Deuteronomy, amen, it talks about this great sermon that he had, and he talks about this love and how, how it's important to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul, and then to love others as we love ourselves. And see, God demonstrated his love in Deuteronomy uh, towards the Israelites by choosing them. First of all, he chose them. We talked about that last week, how he chose us. Amen. So he chose the Israel Israelites to be their special people. Amen. Then he liberates them and get them out of bondage. I know that some of us been in some bondage situations and God got us out of them. Anybody I want to say thank you, Lord. I know that you love me because you helped me get out of my situations and my circumstances. And he even revealed himself. And, and sometimes they didn't listen, even though he revealed himself. And some of us, including myself, have missed out on a lot of things because God revealed himself, but we didn't acknowledge who he was. But he still loved us. Hallelujah. And so he blessed him and he showed him his love. How do I know that? Because some of them made it to the promised land. Hallelujah. Some of them tied off, but at least their children's children was able to enter into the promised land. A few more minutes, I'll be out your way. 
Now, as we get to John 17, I just want to look at that, that 23rd verse that I had read. And it talks about the purpose of the perfected unity is that the world may know God sent Jesus, saved them, but loved them all as well. The love needed among, among believers is a different love from the so-called love of the world. See, the love needed is a sacrificial love that will give all it is and has to minister, watch this, to a world that's living upside down. So that means the love that God gives us, we need to share it with others <laughs> because God will want us to love others as we love ourselves. And so I'll leave you with three thoughts. First, God has given man, each one of us, his very own spirit and the very breath of his own being. That's love. When you give your own spirit, and your own breath to a people that may not acknowledge you, but he gave it to us. So when we, when our children, or when we came out and we started yelling, when we came out, that was the spirit of the Lord. He was putting us together and, and, and binding us together with him. That's number one. God has given man great dignity. He has crowned us with glory and honor. He didn't crown the trees. He didn't crown the earth. He didn't crown. He crowned us, those that he had given his image to. Lastly, God's image that presently rests upon man is only a shadow. It's like a picture upon a stamp. The picture is not the person. It is only a picture, only an image of the person. But we are in the likeness of God. And so you may ask the question, why have God given man an image and a likeness of himself? And here's the word. So that we will walk by faith and freely choose to love and worship God. God has given us enough of himself to cause us to hunger and to seek after him. That's why he tells us, seek the Lord while you can, he can be found. Search for him day and night. Seek his word. Everything we need is in the word of God. Search the scriptures. Ask God to show you where to go when you're feeling down and low and you're going through a certain situation. It's in the word. All you have to do is seek after him. Search the word. And he will heal your heart. What's love got to do with it? It got to do a whole lot with it. Because if it wasn't for God on my side, where would we be? If it wasn't for God on my side, would I be dead today? Can I tell you that I would have been dead a long time ago if he didn't rescue me and I didn't say yes to his name, to his word and his promise? the greatest love story ever told. And you can't sit down just one sitting and talk about it. Because he keeps blessing us over and over again. He keeps giving us another chance over and over again. There's no love like his. He don't judge us. Marriage is well, is called, is ordained by God. Having relationship with one another is good, it's fine. But we need to have a relationship with the one that loves us enough. Uh, that before the foundation of the world, he called us by name. And it's not what we was, it's what we want to become. 
the greatest love story ever told. Let us stand. You know, they always tell you to be also ready. I was not to preach this week. I suppose I've been preaching next week. And every time, you know, I get, you know, the Lord gives me this opportunity, I always go and say, Lord, you know, what, what, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? You know, I, you know, oftentimes we preach all these books maybe every once in a while, right? For myself, I'm not a pastor, so I don't get the opportunity to preach as often as a pastor would. But every time we pick up this word, every time you talk to God, he will give you exactly what you needed. And he ties everything together. The musician didn't know that I was preaching on this, but the Lord knew what he had given me. And he gave him the song to back it up. These are the things I'm talking about. God reveals himself to us and he puts it all together in a pretty package. But we don't acknowledge that he's working in our lives. But when you start connecting the dots of your life, even of your day, it tells me that God loves me. When he could sing a song that just makes my heart glad. When someone can say a word and it does something to our heart. And we ask, how did you know that? Because God put it in my spirit. If that's not love, I don't know what it is. I don't know about you. I was, de I was deep in sin. Far. Far away from God. Never thought I would be preaching the word of God. And even when he revealed it to me, I said, no, God, it could not be me. But as I listened to his still small voice, letting me know that I was important. All my life, I didn't feel like that. I felt like I was the outcast. But he showed up right on time. Now, my right on time and your right on time may be different. But don't judge me. Don't judge what I did or didn't do or what you heard about me. <laughs> because God is working it out. Because he loves me. Someone needs to hear these words today. This is the greatest love story. When God sent his only son to die for us. But not only to die, but to rise again. To let me know it doesn't matter how many times I fall down. It doesn't matter how many times I mess up. If I say, God, Father, forgive me, for I did not know what I've done. Bless me, Lord. Let me start over again. Everybody's not going to give you another chance. Not like the God that we serve. He's not going to pick you up when you're muddy and messed up. But God will. Is there one today under the sound of my voice that needs God 
in their life. If you don't come in my life right now, God, things are not going the right way. Is there one? Is there one to say, I messed up? I could acknowledge that, God. I, I, I accepted you, but I just need to renew my relationship. Is there one? You know, right here, somebody said, well, preacher, why are you crying? Why are you? This is not tears of, of sadness. These are tears of joy. Knowing that the God that I serve is still able to heal, deliver, and set free. You should get teary-eyed for where God has brought you from. I know I would have been dead a long time ago. Is there one today? Is there one today? I ask you to raise your hands. Just put your hands up. Put your hands up, both hands if you can. I learned this uh, in my studies. That when you're going through and you feel like you're out of breath. If you could.